As we continue our sermon series for Lent, it's, uh, we're giving things up. And, and yes, in, in Lent is, is kind of like the, uh, the uh, New Year's resolutions take two. Uh, we you know, get to about the end of January and we've given up on, on uh, our New Year's resolutions. And then uh, Ash Wednesday comes around and, and we think, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to try this again. And so we, we try again. And, and uh, well, we're a couple of weeks into it now. And, and well, yeah, um, I'm still six weeks behind, no, six days behind on my Bible reading, and, and um, well, last week I put in 86 hours counting travel time and meetings and things, and so that whole working out at the gym thing didn't work out this week either. Um, so we're trying, and uh, you know, it's one of those things that we do the best we can and God fills in the rest. But today we're going to be giving up expectations, it's based on John 3, but let's talk about expectations. Okay, I could not have set up children's sermon any better with the kids. What's something yummy we can put in the bowl? Peas, and that's what I, I could not, I, we did not talk ahead of time or whatever. That was a great thing. I mean, that was a God moment. I did not expect that. I don't expect children to want to open up a can of vegetables to be a yummy thing in a bowl. We don't expect, God doesn't expect perfection out of us. Even though sometimes we do. And expecting us to maintain our New Year's resolutions and expecting us to maintain our Lenten fast and expecting us, we fall short. We fall short of perfection. Even though we try so hard to be so good at so many things. In Genesis chapter 12, we have the, it talks about the call of Abram. And it says this, The Lord has said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And we know the rest of that story. And Abram says, Okay, God, I will follow your lead. I will go where you want me to go. I will do the best that I can. He had no expectations. He didn't know what was to come. He just knew that God had something better for him around the corner. God said, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all people will be blessed through you. The expectations on Abram turned Abraham were high. What's expected of us? What's expected of us? Well, you know, uh, in, in, in growing up as, as, as a small child, I was expected to, to have manners. I, to this day, will still say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, to people. And they're like, you know, what, what, you're old now. Why are you giving titles and because it was instilled I'll use that word instead of beat instilled in me at a young age expectations I got a little bit older and I was expected to go to school I was expected to get decent grades I was expected to go to college. I was expected to get a good job. I was expected. These are the expectations that we have. What are your expectations? As a pastor, you expect me to, to deliver something worthwhile to say on Sunday mornings. You expect me to visit people that are sick or in, in uh, uh, the hospital or in jail or various things. You expect me to, to live a life worthy of the calling. I'm not expected to be a drunkard or a thief. I'm not expected to be, you know, you isn't me in jail, so to speak. We have expectations. The problem is that sometimes we set our expectations too high. Or we set our expectations too low. There is a phenomenon given around called a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
And what we think of other people is what they will achieve. And when I said that, I saw about three teachers in the room go, uh huh. If we label kids idiots, they'll live into that. If we label kids troublemakers, they'll live into that. If we label kids, or on the flip side, if we label kids geniuses or high achievers, it's, it's amazing how they live into that. What happens when we give titles and tags to people that aren't like us? Well, we expect the, the, the Orientals to be good at math. We expect the, the Hispanics to be lazy, no good, wetbacks. Ooh. If I even thought that anybody thought that I was racist or prejudiced, I wouldn't have said any of that. Because I don't believe any of that crap. Not a word of it. We live in a country that is riddled with bigotry, hatred, and racism. We live in a country that the expectations of people are that they're going to be vile and violent and problems. I'm here to say that we need to give up those expectations. Follow into the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, and I pray that someday my children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by their character their content. So what did Jesus do? That's always a good place to start. What, would, what did Jesus do? And we look at that in John 3. So let's look at that real quick. This is where Jesus comes to Nicodemus. Now there was a man, a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Nicodemus says, uh, how can someone be born when they're old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell from where it comes or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know. And we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I've spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. May God bless us for the hearing and the reading of the Holy Scripture this morning. So what does this have to do with our expectations? Well, first of all, we need to look at this a little closer. It says a Pharisee named Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Nicodemus was scared. Nicodemus expected Jesus to slam him, to punch him, to push him, to do something to him. Nicodemus didn't know what was going to happen. And also, Nicodemus didn't want anybody to see him coming there because he expected the rest of the Jewish council to then shun him or punish him for coming and talking to Jesus. 
Nicodemus came and asked a simple question, and Jesus answered in a different way. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Now, we have a, an interesting concept of that in modern days. We think that it's a, a lightning bolt experience, and we start speaking in tongues, or we spark, start dancing in the spirit. Or I'm here to tell you being born again is a heart issue. And in the church and in society and in this country, that is our major problem, is that we have a heart issue. We don't have a heart to care. We don't have a heart to nurture. We don't have a heart to reach out to the different, to the ones that we have low expectations. So we need to give up those expectations on people and mend our hearts toward them. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you don't know where it comes or where it goes. That is our faith. Why do you believe what you believe? I don't know, because I believe it. In the children's sermon, and yes, I did not buy the can that way. I actually removed the label. I have a can of, of peas in my office if anybody wants it. I switched the labels, and so expected we expected peas to come out of that can. We expected one thing, and all of a sudden something happens, and we're in shock and awe of the magic that the pastor can do. No, it's just switching labels. It was pretty simple. We're in shock and awe when somebody does amazing things. We're in shock and awe when... when Someone achieves amazing things. But why are we? I think I've told this story here before, but I'm going to tell it again because it's an amazing story. I was serving a church, and as all of you know, I invite everybody to church. I mean, I'll go out to eat, and my waitress or waiter gets invited to church. I get, you know, gas and have to go inside to get the receipt because it was cold outside, and they don't change the paper when it's cold, and they just make you come inside and get your receipt when you pump gas. And, and so the cashier at, at Quickie, whatever it is, I invite them to come to church, and I wear my church shirts everywhere I go, and I'm a walking billboard for Bethel United Methodist Church. And, and away we go with all of this stuff. I expect people to show up. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and that's okay. But I expect people to show up. I expect guests and visitors to come. I expect people to call me. I hand out business cards like cotton candy at, at the, the circus. I expect people to call. I expect people to text. I expect people to, to, to jump on Facebook and, and, and look. I expect. It happens. It doesn't happen. It's okay. But in that, I was at a church, and I won't tell you which one, but it's been years ago, and I did the same thing. I invited a young man to come to church, and wow, he came. Yes, one, starfish, made a difference to that one, got him in church. He broke all the rules. He came in his T-shirt and cut off jean shorts, his flip-flops. He came and sat right down front. Now, he actually had an aisle in the middle, so it was one side or the other. I can't remember which one. But, I mean, he couldn't have gotten any closer to the pulpit if he had to, unless he would have come up here and joined me. And he stared at me with that stare <laughs> through the entire service. And he looked around. He stood up and looked around, and he looked at people, and I mean, it, everybody in the place was, was fidgeting. They were uncomfortable. This guy was making a difference, and it wasn't a positive one. I even had one that, like, moved back two pews away from him. 
did the final amen. I was getting ready to do, we had the closing song, I did the final amen. Getting ready to give my standard blessing. And then it happened. I wasn't expecting it. He says, preacher! Oh, dear God, what? <laughs> he said, preacher, when's all the stuff happen? We just had worship. We sang, we read, I preached. It was, it was worship. He says, no, man. He says, when's all the stuff happen? He says, I've read scripture and, and people run forward and thousands are saved every single day. I've read the scriptures and, 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 and Jesus healed folks. The blind can see, the deaf can hear. He says, I've read the scriptures and, and the Holy Spirit comes in like a gush of wind and, and blows everybody away. He says, when's the stuff happen? His expectations were of an axe. Chapter 2, church. What's our expectations of church? Oops. We've sat in these pews for, and I won't give out numbers because I don't want to embarrass anybody for the years we've sat on the promise, or on the premises. Maybe we've sat on the promises. But what's our expectations? Do we expect the Holy Spirit to show up? Do we expect us to be the hands and feet of Christ? I say it every single week. But do I even live out the expectations I have for myself? Oh, I put in 86 hours last week driving and meetings. I'm not exactly sure a room full of pastors needs ministry. Well, maybe we do. But what's our expectations? Do we expect to go into the world and make a difference? Do we expect people to come in to our building and us make a difference to them? What do we expect? Nicodemus did not expect Jesus to warmly welcome him into his home. Nicodemus did not expect Jesus to love. Nicodemus was expecting to get scolded and to get chastised. And then the greatest part on this is, is that then in this passage today, Jesus gives out the football scripture. We all know the football scripture, right? It's the one that everybody holds up on big cards at football games. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the scripture that we always hear. But I want to point out 17 today, too. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. We miss that part. Because that means we got to do something. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. That's where we come in. That's what we do. What's our expectations? Our expectation is to love like Christ loved. Our expectation is to nurture like Christ nurtured. Our expectation is to accept like Christ accepted. Our expectations are to not judge people by the color of their skin or where they come or whatever their choices in life are. We are not set as judges of the world. We are set in the world to be that mighty wind of the Spirit of God that makes a difference. We're expected to be corn in a can of peas. We may not be pretty on the outside. We may, may not be something to look at or something fancy or something snazzy. But I pray that our hearts are golden Sweet and yummy. Where are we going to go with this? Well, we got several weeks of Lent still coming. 
and we're going to keep giving it up. So I encourage you, not only today, but all through Lent and all your life, give it up for Jesus.